Welcome to Dr. Ernest Simo's series on satellite communications. This tape presents an introduction to satellite communication systems. First, let's talk about the global satellite network. Satellite communications technology evolved from microwave, radar, and rocketry technologies developed during the Second World War. In the 60s, successful experiments demonstrated the transmission of voice, data, and video signals via satellite. In 1964, the commercialization of satellite services began with the creation of the International Satellite Communications Organization, Intelsat. Intelsat was founded with the purpose to design, develop, implement, operate, and maintain the space segment of a global commercial communication system. Intelsat is headquartered in Washington, D.C., and currently has over 150 member countries from all continents. The Intelsat system consists of three geostationary space stations located over the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. Spacecraft design and production, as well as the system organization, operation, and management, were initially delegated by Intelsat to the Communication Satellite Corporation, COMSAT. The satellite launching arrangements were made via the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA. Intelsat users designed their own Earth stations, however. In order to keep the overall system at its design standards, each user must comply with Intelsat requirements and the International Telecommunications Union recommendations. The satellites providing global coverage were severely power limited. Parabolic antennas with 30 meters reflectors were used. These antennas, referred to as standard A stations, were huge, very expensive, costing millions of dollars, and continuously manned. The domestic applications of satellites became a worldwide trend. In the early 70s, the successes of space communications led several countries to develop, for various reasons, satellite communication systems for their domestic use. Canada became the first country in the Western Hemisphere to implement a domestic satellite system. The system, known as ANIC, allows distribution of voice, data, radio, and television programs throughout Canada and particularly the northern isolated areas of the country. Norway implemented a domestic satellite system in the early 70s to move information to and from the drilling platforms and oil exploration sites of the Norwegian sector of the North Sea. The ground segment consisted of a master station inland and remote terminals offshore. Several other countries, especially third world nations, leased transponders from Intelsat in order to implement domestic satellite systems supporting telephone and television services. Some of these countries included Algeria, Sudan, Zaire, and Nigeria. Brazil, India, Mexico, the Arab countries, and Indonesia also implemented domestic or regional systems with owned satellites. These systems are also known as Brazilsat, Insat, Morelos, Arabsat, and Palapa systems. The European Telecommunications Satellite Organization, UTELSAT, is, in a sense, the European equivalent of Intelsat. In order to keep pace with the race for space, the European community, through the European Space Agency, has created a regional telecommunications network. This network provides satellite-delivered voice, data, and video services, and supports research, development, and experimental programs throughout Western Europe. In 1972, a significant event in the evolution of satellite communications occurred in the United States. The Federal Communications Commission announced the policy of open skies, allowing the ownership of satellite systems by any financially responsible organization intending to serve public interest. Western Union, using Westar satellites, pioneered the domestic market in the 70s. Other companies followed. RCA American Communications Incorporated, operating SATCOM satellites, ComSat General Corporation using ComStar satellites, and Hughes Communications Incorporated with its Galaxy series of satellites.
the use of satellites for corporate and private networks gradually became cost effective. In the late 70s and early 80s, satellite technology found attractive applications in private networks. This trend was accelerated by the exploitation of higher frequency bands, such as the KU and KA bands. Higher frequencies have shorter wavelength than lower frequencies. This implies smaller microwave components and subsystems. Due to their small sizes, KU band terminals can be compact, portable, and easily installed in built-up metropolitan areas. Antenna sizes in corporate networks range from 1.8 meters to 9 meters, depending on the frequency band and system applications. Spacecrafts used in conventional domestic systems are generally more powerful than those used for global applications. The power is further focused into a smaller geographical area so as to allow the use of smaller and cheaper Earth stations, costing less than half a million dollars, depending on size and redundancy requirements. Recently, a class of satellite communications technology known as Very Small Aperture Terminals, or VSATs, has emerged as a leading candidate for corporate network implementation. A typical remote VSAT capable of supporting a 56 kilobit per second duplex circuit can be installed for less than $15,000. In a VSAT network, tens, hundreds, or even thousands of remote terminals are connected via satellite to a central station known as the hub. Functionally, the hub supports all the network communications, management, operations, monitoring, and control capabilities. Using cost-effective VSAT solutions for corporate network requirements, significant reductions in the user's telecommunications expenditures can be achieved. The next generation of high-powered satellites during the 90s and developments in Earth Station electronics will enable significant reduction of the ground terminal size and costs. The spacecrafts will provide several spot beams and have onboard switching and processing capabilities. Future satellite services will provide mobile communications to moving trucks and cars on the streets, boats and ships at sea, and planes in the air. A satellite monitoring service can be implemented to give dispatchers better information on the status of their fleet to improve operations. To ensure that disasters such as earthquakes, windstorms, floods, fires, and explosions do not become catastrophic, a transportable or non-permanent satellite network can be used to support voice, data, and video services. Satellite will provide high-resolution remote sensing images for agricultural and mining analysis and television editorial productions. Furthermore, the use of small-sized satellite terminals in remote communities and rural areas will greatly enhance educational and health care services. Now let's discuss the frequency bands for satellite communications. Frequencies available for satellite communications are allocated on an international basis by the International Telecommunications Union, ITU. Through the ITU, headquartered in Geneva, Switzerland, nations cooperate in the use and management of telecommunications resources. These nations also adopt policies to minimize interference, to provide common standards and to promote the development of efficient technical facilities. The frequency bands used or being considered for commercial applications are the C, KU, and KA bands. C band systems make use of the 6 gigahertz frequency band for the uplink transmission of signals from the earth stations to the satellites. The downlink transmission from the satellite to the earth stations is performed in the 4 gigahertz frequency band. C-band is the first band used by commercial satellite systems and is currently saturated. Its available bandwidth of 500 megahertz is simultaneously used by satellite and microwave users. Hence, the design process must perform frequency coordination in order to protect the satellite system from terrestrial interference. However, C-band technology is well proven and signal transmission is not significantly affected by propagation effects such as rain attenuation and depolarization. 
KU band systems make use of the 14 gigahertz frequency band for uplink transmission to the satellites and 12 gigahertz band for downlink transmission to the earth stations. With an available bandwidth of 500 megahertz, the KU band is dedicated to satellite communications and is not shared by terrestrial microwave systems. This significantly reduces the need for frequency coordination and terrestrial interference analysis. However, KU band transmissions incur signal strength reduction and distortion due to rain. KA band systems use the 30 gigahertz and 20 gigahertz bands for uplink and downlink transmissions respectively. This band is also dedicated to satellite communications and has an available bandwidth of 2500 megahertz. KA band technology is still in its infancy and will not be commercially available in the United States before the early 1990s. Higher powered satellites with onboard processing capabilities will make this technology very attractive for trunking, customer premises, and mobile applications. However, KA band signals are severely affected by rain and propagation effects. For satellite frequency bands described above, capacity can be enhanced by reusing frequencies. Three techniques are available to meet this goal, namely the polarization diversity via linear or circular polarizations, space diversity via regional or spot beams, and co-location of satellites operating at different frequency bands.